So I'm Liz. I do commentary on TV shows, anime, uh, video games. A lot of things that I find interesting are going to find me doing videos on, you know, things that I like. And I thought that I would, you know, just sit here and do a video about, you know, the things that I found really interesting about this season of you and in particular, love and her impulsivity. So that's going to be my topic of discussion for this video. So let's just get into it. Hi editing Liz here so this is just a quick spoiler warning for anyone who hasn't seen season three of you if you haven't seen it you might want to pause right here because I'm gonna spoil a lot of the season probably the whole thing so yeah don't say I didn't warn ya <laughs> we begin season three of you with Love and Joe giving birth to their, you know, child, Henry, Forty Goldberg. Yes, his middle name is Forty. Her mom is present the whole time while she's there. Like, it's to the point where she is in the delivery room with them while she's giving birth to their baby, right? And they're really hammering home the idea that no one is over 40's death. The mom isn't over it. Love isn't over it. I mean, Joe's over it because he doesn't give a fuck. But Love and her mom, they're, they're not over it. So that is why they give him the middle name of... And does he have a middle name? 40. And love is unraveling from the second that she loses 40 in season two. And we, you know, we see little hints of this throughout the show. Why does everybody think I'm impulsive? Well, they, you know, you see her slowly, you know, becoming more and more unhinged as we go. And why don't you love me anymore? It's unsettling to say the least, but we don't really see it for real until she blows up, you know, until she blows up and kills somebody because, you know, this show is not about love. This show is about Joe because, <laughs> you know, he's our sociopathic stalker, of course. But anyway, I digress. Love kills indiscriminately in season three, right? At the end of the very first episode, she kills somebody. That's how ruthless she is in in this season right bottom line in the right hands this place could be a raging success so what do you think hey love hey you okay you know, i think we need to go to couples therapy so i think we're really <laughs> driving this point that she is not thinking clearly at all love is not on earth she is in this, like, she is in this entirely different reality. We are not on the same planet as love. And she has a really clear pattern that she's following all throughout season three. She is going crazy. She smacks up Gil when he visits her to apologize about not vaxxing those damn kids, right? Gil? Yeah. Max poor Theo upside the head and um. <coughs> let's not even talk about that messy ass affair that she's having with Theo dear god <laughs> so we eventually get to um an episode where we address love's, you know, mommy issues at that social media event that she has with her mom. And her grief and her messiness just all smack her in the face. 
all at once, okay? She has been texting her brother's phone number. Her dead brother, mind you. This is her brother who has been dead since last season. She has been texting that phone number, texting her dead twin brother, talking about all this mess that she has been committing. Cheating on Joe, you know, murdering all these people. It's just, you know, insanity. And she has not been dealing with his death well at all. At all. And while she is at this event, um, her and her mom are just not getting along. They're just clashing this entire time. You're the reason Forty and I are so fucked up. Don't you talk about it's him? No. And her mom goes and announces her pregnancy, her second pregnancy, that she has not told anyone about up until this point. And of course, love flips the fuck out, okay? She flips the fuck out. Possibly another addition on oh the way. God. Oh my God! Love, what are you doing? Sherry, can you give us a second? Oh, love, I just... No, seriously, get the fuck out. Thank you. How the hell could you do that? I, I don't even know for sure. I haven't even told Joe. That's not surprising. And this is the argument of all arguments, right? I swear I heard the Mortal Kombat announcer just go, Fight! And you know what? <laughs> I really, oh shit, okay, so my phone alarm just went off, just a second. She, this one thing that her mom says, just, it, it fucks me up, because she's like, does Joe not know that you've been slutting around with this little neighbor boy? And I was like, oh my god, it's no wonder love has fucking mommy issues, like, it's no wonder, her mom fucking sucks too. But at the same time, love does fucking ruin everything that she touches. And it's like, bitch, you are spoiled. You're hella spoiled. But anyway, love starts bleeding and it's, it comes to the point where we see that she is miscarrying. The grief, the stress, all, all the arguing with her mom, it, causes her to miscarry and she loses that baby before it has a chance. And this may sound insensitive, but they didn't need to have any more babies, okay? We'll just leave it at that. She's not, got to use, she's not gonna get to use any of those baby names that she had in mind, you know, those baby names are no more. And love sends one last text to her brother while, you know, she's dealing with the aftermath of that explosive argument that her and her mom had. She's shit-faced at this point. She is like ass deep in a drunken stupor, right? She is in a bathtub and she's like, well, I'm gonna send this last message and this is it. And this time she gets a response, right? She gets a reply and it's a fucking pizza emoji. And after this, we're just like, okay, this is gonna get weird because this always happens. Like it always gets weird when, you know, people just get drunk or they, you know, someone gets drugged or whatever. And so 40 appears in the bathtub across from her while she's just shit-faced, okay? And <laughs> I'm just sitting there like, huh, nani? <laughs> Nandaska? So, okay, I'll admit, you know, it, it was kind of cute. I loved 40, like the actor that plays him in the show. I, I liked him, so it was really cute to have him come back. I do think that love needed to you know, let some of that shit out because homegirl don't got no one to talk to. She is always just, you know, by her damn self. She don't got nobody. She doesn't trust anyone. And even Joe, her own fucking husband, she's over here like, uh, sir, 
I still don't trust you, despite the fact that, you know, you're my fucking husband. Anyway, in this scene, Forty tells her that Joe is not her soulmate. And this entire time, love has slowly been easing away from him. Uh, she's been getting all this information from their couple's therapy sessions where she's learning about his abandonment issues and all this stuff. And it's insane how it's just showing the juxtaposition of how to make your marriage work and putting it right next to what the issue is and she's just going the opposite direction. <laughs> you are going to leave me? Are you insane? <laughs> and when Forty pops up and says, love, he is not your soulmate. We're all just sitting there like, no shit, Sherlock. No fucking shit. Like, okay. Clearly, you guys have been like walking opposite directions from each other. You guys have been continually playing this game of trying to make the other person destroy the marriage before you do. And the intensity with which they play this game with each other is just, it's crazy. I can't trust you. I can't trust you either. I was trying to, yes, 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 I did things. But I have worked hard to be better, and I am not that person anymore. But now, I will be marrying bodies until I'm 70 years old. It's probably, like, the funniest thing for me is the different points throughout the season of their little plans of, how can I get this motherfucker to dump my ass? Love is over here like, well, let me go cheat on him. Let's see if he finds out. Joe couldn't give two shits. He's like, girl, I've been looking at our neighbor. I, I don't give a fuck. M my boss got a nice, tight little ass that I like. He can give two shits about what love is doing, right? And I think the funniest and most unexpected way that they tried doing that this season was probably the opening of the marriage where they bring Sherry and Carrie into their house and ch and try to fuck with them like that was fucking hilarious it just love we knew that you couldn't handle watching Joe fuck another woman like let's be honest I don't know why you thought that watching Sherry go oh big boy like that was gonna make you like that was not gonna make you feel good girl i i just i don't i don't know oh big boy uh, uh, uh. she got so mad at what she saw that she went downstairs into her own kitchen starts a fight with joe and blabs about murdering their neighbor and guess what they heard that shit of course they heard that shit they some nosy ass people you gonna tell me that they're not gonna try to listen to whatever you're talking about love honestly you are the dumbest bitch in town keeping this house together dragging you to therapy trying to be my sexiest self so you don't get bored and find another natalie please look at your phone why you hate hearing the truth our marriage is completely one-sided that is absurd you made me kill her in addition to being mother of the fucking year i had to run interference on one of your fucking patterns i killed natalie for you shut up So she goes off and she's yelling in her kitchen, right? She's blabbing about Natalie, just screaming. And I'm just sitting there like, God damn, this bitch always gonna be so loud at the wrong time. Y'all have guests, love. You're being rude. But in the end, Joe was caught up. He got caught up being his usual stalker ass self. Love realized that while Sherry was fucking him, he was supposed to visualize his partner. 
He wasn't visualizing her. She was like, he's never fucked me like that. He wasn't thinking about me. There's somebody else. And of course, there is somebody else because who but love this crazy ass bitch would realize that he's thinking about somebody else in that moment. <laughs> I'm just like, I, how the fuck she know? Anyway, cutie from the library, you know, Joe's new girl, she is the girl that Joe ends up, you know, really starting to get a hankering for, right? And what's worse is that Joe's already gone and done his, you know, his savior thing. He's gone and killed her ex for her. And love is not going to take this shit, okay? Love is not going to take this shit. She's not happy with this because you are not going to cheat on her like that. You're not. You're not gonna cheat on her. You're not gonna leave her. So she makes Joe some dinner and she waits. That's what love does. She waits. So Joe already knows what happened with this last guy. Her mom, before she leaves, tells him that she thinks that love murdered her last husband. And the pettiness of this bitch, man. The fact that she told Joe that before she goes is like, damn, man. That's your daughter, though. But anyway, that that doesn't matter. We know daddy's petty. Your choice to fuck the neighbor boy and blow up your life has nothing to do with me and has everything to do with you being spoiled and bored. I'll take the blame for spoiling you. You want the source of your unhappiness? Look in the mirror. Anyway. He knows that she did this. He did his research. So he's like, all right. So she's going to try to paralyze me. Okay. She's going to try to stab me. But I got to, you know, I got to arm myself. So he goes and he grabs the knife. It's too bad love already thought about this. And she's like, nah, nah. You grab the weapon that was your your worst decision you grab the weapon that means you're gonna get paralyzed because it's absorbed through the skin it was at this moment that he knew he fucked up oh no 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 do i need to point out that none of this would be happening if you hadn't grabbed a weapon so yes her plan was to kill joe get Marianne to come over, kill her too, and book it the fuck out of there. (laughs) Because this is Love Quinn, guys. Love Quinn Goldberg does not get left. She murders you instead. But yes, uh, she invites Marianne over and she tells her that Joe killed her ex It wasn't just a robbery. Joe did it. And he's obsessed with you, girl. But she doesn't kill her. Plot armor is awesome. No, I'm just kidding. Her daughter walks in in a very opportune moment and just asks to use the bathroom. And love honestly surprises me in this moment because I, I was really worried for her. I was like... Love is about to kill a child. Love is about to murder this mother and her child. <laughs> I really thought that about her because this bitch been killing everybody. Like, I don't know. I don't know who she's going to kill and who she's not going to kill. We don't know. So she felt bad this one time. And I don't know. Was it because she called Joe toxic? Like, was she... Was her admitting you know, taking some of the blame and understanding that her pattern of liking toxic guys, did love kind of identify somehow with that and just decide, hey, you know, I'm just going to live my best life. I'm going to murder him and I'm just going to, you know, be a single mom like Marianne. (laughs) We don't know. Anyway, back to Joe. He's over here laying down still, and his love is about to go finish him off, or so we think. He's like, surprise, bitch. (laughs) 
And it turns out, he, before everything, he took some adrenaline from Carrie's, you know, the little trunk that he stole from him that night that they fucking, you know, when he saved Theo and took him to the, you know, whatever, you know. It works so conveniently, right? But he saves Theo with, you know, the medication that was also in there. When he did that, he took some adrenaline. And I guess that dulled the effects of the wolf's bane that paralyzed him. And so with an already prepared syringe that he had, he fucking stabs love in the thigh with that shit. And then that's it. That's the end of love. He fucking writes up something, sends it out to all the people in the homeowners association making it seem like she's the mastermind behind everything and then he fucking conveniently gets the fuck out of there and you know just leaves some toes in a pie and makes it seem like love did everything he really fucking committed he cut off his toes for this shit homie is just way too calculated in the end the grieving and impulsive love queen was bested I didn't see it coming in this way, but I knew that she had to die before the season even started. Not gonna lie, I don't know if anyone else saw that shit coming, but when she screamed out she was pregnant in the second season, I was like, nah, this is not gonna make it. This woman has to calm down and having a baby is not gonna calm her down. If anything, it's gonna do the opposite of that. And I was right. You had a fucking hook to my throat. And then I said I was pregnant. And then we just went on and pretended like it didn't happen. No, 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 we didn't. No, we didn't. It was a bad moment for both of us. It was a bad moment a lifetime Fuck you. ago. Fuck you. You, you, you. you act all pure and noble, like, like you have reasons for what you do what you do. But when I do it, I'm crazy, right? I'm, 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 I'm some manic nut job. But oh, wait, oh, wait. She's a mom now. I guess I can't slit her throat. I was really rooting for Joe to finish Love Off. You know, I I hate the way the show has a way of doing that. Like, yeah, Joe's a shithead. Yeah, Joe's a stalker who fucking sucks. He really fucking sucks. Don't get me wrong in any way. He fucking sucks. But watching Love this season, I, I was just angry that Joe was trying to you know, not fuck up his son. He was trying not to impulsively murder people. You take care of the baby. You can deal with Natalie. You care more about her than your own son anyway. Well, he's like, okay, if I'm gonna murder people, let's make it look a certain way so it's not like, you know, let's do it for noble reasons. Even though he still fucking sucks. Like, Joe sucks. There's no defending it, but love is way fucking worse she's just over here impulsively offing everybody and it's like no shit bitch no wonder he killed you you know he's sick of digging holes to hide all the bodies of the people that you kill with no plan that's not to say i'm a joe apologist i swear i'm not and as much as i hated sherry and carrie i kind of would have been okay with them killing joe but then you know, we wouldn't have gotten a fourth season, so I, I get it. I have no idea what Joe or Nick is going to be doing in Paris, but I'm worried. Somebody got to put this man and his seven toes away. That's all I'm saying. For more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Comment down below for any topics or any TV shows or any anime cartoons video games anything you'd like commentary on um that's pretty much it i'm what you see here and what you see is what you get so thanks so much for watching god i'm so awkward <laughs>